Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. How's how do I look? How do I, ah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. How's how do I look? How do I, ah? <laughs> I just saw value in that at a very young age, and I'm like, well, what if I can apply the same concept to get one customer to refer me 100? So I'm the founder of Custom Creatives. We're a digital marketing agency that helps local business owners turn clicks into paying customers. Today I'm talking about how you can build an entire organization, a multi-million dollar business, by just leveraging partnerships and relationships without spending a dime on advertising. I've had success with this exact method because I've never looked at a competitor as, an, as a competitor. I've looked at them all as allies because everybody outsources. That's the number one thing. We don't make our own rice. We don't make our own bananas in our backyard. We outsource it. And the places we buy it from also outsource. Their competitors sell to other competitors. I'm gonna teach you the exact framework that I use myself on a day-to-day -day level to reach out to more partnerships so I can make more sales, help more customers, and help everybody in this whole entire ecosystem all succeed and win. In the course, I'm gonna break down like how to find and identify partners that you can reach out to as early as five minutes from starting, um, the marketing materials and the contracts that you're gonna need, the mindset and the focus you have uh, to have to be able to be persistent and not give up, and also um, a script that you can utilize so you can reach out to more partners faster. So this video that we're gonna be presenting to you is gonna be less than 25 minutes in length, and after that, you should be able to reach out to over 100 people almost immediately. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? What's happening? Happy Saturday. I wanna see if you guys can hear me. I'm just doing a mic check, because I got a, I got a fancy mic. Like I went from a road to a shore, so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just buying all kinds of equipment. Sound great, bro. All right, good. Yeah, because I, I was playing with this thing last night, and I was testing. It was pretty late at night, and I uh, asked somebody, I'm like, hey, can you tell my fancy new mic? And I didn't plug it in, and they're like, that sounds fantastic. And then I plugged it in and they're like, I'm like, how about now? They're like, oh, it sounded better before. So I'm like, damn it, my MacBook sounded better. <laughs> so anyways, I'll be playing with, with new equipment. I got to probably calibrate it. But anyways, I'm going to be deconstructing some cool stuff here. And the, the takeaway that I want people to, to receive from this information isn't just information. It's going to be like action. So if you guys want to take a pen and paper, this is a, a strategy that that works for a lot of people that I know too, that I've either taught it to or I've learned from. Um, and it's partnerships. It's basically, I compared in that little video I was running before, I have a full breakdown in the guides tab. It's guide number one that goes through about 10 minutes of how to kind of put your list together of people you want to partner with um, so that you can actually identify them that they can send you a bunch of business. So like for, for Tiffany, for example, I can see her live here on the Zoom with her, she works with realtors. Now, what would be a good partner to work with realtors? Would it be closing a mortgage broker, coming up with an angle to close homes.com or Zillow or the big dogs realtor.com, or even a smaller website that is on the rise um, to do some sort of service for them? Um, because they're all gonna have a pain point. They're all gonna be outsourcing something to a bunch of vendors. They're all not loyal to anybody except their greedy selves. So we have to know that going in. Everybody outsources something. We just have to find out what that something is. And once we know it, we now put together a little value stack that can eliminate those problems. Um, and you will become the solution if you ask the right questions. Um, I'm gonna break down what I did. I did things a little, a little unique. It took me about this relationship that I'm gonna be talking about today, deconstructing it, took about like two and a half, three years to close. Um, and But the outcome was a lot right? It changed the trajectory of where the agency was going. Um, we were doing fairly well, meaning like cold calling was our game. Uh, we started to rank on Google. We we're spending a lot of all our money on marketing, um, really not earning anything for the first few years, other than like paying for the, the basics, like our, our basic bills and, and whatnot, and just really living super frugal for the first three years. 
Uh, but we we're still doing about 30k 40k a month and that was just straight cold calling because we didn't know any better that's what, how we we grew we, we were groomed me and my partner at that time um anyways i just wanted to give you the lay of the land so you don't go thinking this is like super easy to close a huge dog but it can be easier if you have connections i just didn't have any that i wanted to leverage at the time i was kind of like i didn't believe in network is your net worth i believe that that's the easy way out, which was stupid thinking. I just said, fuck that. I'm not listening to anybody, even though I have the best people around me. Um, I'm just going to go guns blazing all by myself, not listen to mom and dad, not listen to anybody's advice. Fuck you. I know the answers. I mean, hindsight's 2020. I wish I would have listened. I would have probably been further ahead. But anyways, things worked out. Um, so you can't go backwards in decision making. So you just got to go forwards. Um, so uh, let me just break down this thing. I, 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 when I started my business, the first great idea I had and was a virtual assistant. Um, this is before the term VA even like was anything. Um, I just called it like, Hey, these people at realtor.com, these realtors, um, they don't know what the fuck they're doing and they're making too much money. That's a conundrum to me. They don't know what they're doing yet. They're making too much money. So I'm like, damn, anybody with a license has a license to print money because, you can you don't even know have to have to know how to show a home to sell a home when I was starting because it was just that that hot of a market. So I was like, all right, let me let me not get the license. Let me just sell stuff to them. Um, and I knew that since cash flow was not going to be an issue, and when things are good, people don't really plan for the show to end. They don't plan for that cycle to end. So people are willing to spend a lot more. They're not they're not thinking three years in the future or one year in the future. So anyways, I came up with this thing saying, hey, if you're a real estate agent, I know you don't know how to use any technology whatsoever. You barely know how to like send a text message properly back then. Um, let me just help you guys uh, upload your listings to your MLS, write the descriptions, make it stand out. I'll use fancy capital letters and like stars and exclamation points. So it catches the eye. And I found a little ranking system on websites like homes.com, realtor.com, et cetera, where if you put like a star or three stars or an exclamation point, like the exclamation point was the key kicker. Nobody really knew this. I don't know why, but if you put an exclamation point in front of a, in front of a, a name of a real estate agent, they happen to rank number one on on the find a realtor's directory in these big portals. So I was like, huh, that's cool. So then if I wanted to rank somebody else, I just put two exclamation points. And then the way the numbering system worked, it was like they would alphabetize realtors. So it was an unfair ranking system. So if we put a character that would rise above the, the letter. So the algorithm was all messed up. Anyways, that, that didn't work out. That failed miserably. We didn't know what to charge. We we're charging $50 a month. Like think about that 50 fucking dollars. That's like a month. Um, anyways, that turned into, we couldn't afford to get paid $50 to actually out outbound call people. Um, so we turned that into $600 a year. So we'd get two months free so we can get cash flow. that was selling. So we said, all right, it's thousand bucks that was selling, but then we're like, shoot, um, we got to actually do some work here now. And we're like, fuck, this is not going to be fun. Um, and we didn't think to teach somebody else to do it, which otherwise I would have probably worked out pretty well, but we didn't even think that far ahead. Um, so anyways, long story short, um, we, we changed the offer to saying, we'll charge you all this money, but we're not going to do any work for you until you call us. So we wanted to change the customer service, um, because we didn't want to put the pressure on ourselves and have a customer come back to us and saying, Hey, you didn't do a damn thing. Now we just reversed it saying, Hey, we're sitting right here. I'll, I'll wear an email away. You get a listing, you send us the pictures, Give us whatever generic bullshit description you're going to write. We'll make it fancy and we'll put it up. We'll give you advice if we need better pictures and just make it look halfway decent because you're going to be making 20 grand on this. Put some effort into the pictures. Don't make it look like shit because that's how people buy homes is by looking at pictures, then deciding if they're going to go look at the listing. Anyways, now we pivoted. This is the pivotal moment because I knew a lot of people at Realtor.com. There's 120 salespeople. Um, and I had relationships with them. So they would refer me this product, this virtual assistant product, because when you're a salesperson at an organization like that, your job is to make quota so you don't get fired and commissions so you can get paid well. And there was an accelerator where if you got 
to your quota, everything above your quota was paid at an accelerator rate. So we got paid like shit there, but there were so many leads that it actually stacked up. I think it was like 7% for new business there and 3% for re renewal business. Um, and you had a percentage of new business you had to bring in and a percentage of renewals that you had to renew. Um, so it's kind of like a weird thing. They kept lowering the commissions, but then they kept getting more leads. So it kind of balanced itself out a bit. Um, anyways, the the sale, the, the customer service wasn't like in alignment with sales because salespeople are crazy, say whatever they want. Anyway, so that was the pain. So that's an important part of the story. It was the pain of that person, that salesperson, so I can get leads. So they decided, uh, uh, I, I started to say, hey, refer me the people you sell so they don't cancel your shit. And that way you don't have to do your own retention because we all know what happens when you go to customer service. It's gonna, they're gonna lose it for you. They're definitely gonna lose it for you. And you know it, I know it. And then guess what happens? If you close people in February, guess what happens when people return that shit in March? Your, your March commissions are already started in the negative. You actually owe money. You owe money back uh, to the company. So you're starting at negative hundreds of dollars, sometimes in some cases, thousands of dollars. Um, so people knew, give, close a client, give it to Rahul. Close a client, give it to Rahul. So it was like a jingle on their head. Close Rahul, close Rahul. So I embedded that in people's heads. Like, let me like make your lives easier. I know the system. I know it better than your own customer service. I know it better than, heck, you guys probably even know it because you guys are salespeople. Um, so anyways, they started referring business. One day, got this call. I'm pretty sure it was from my boy, Mo. Um, and him and I worked together for like two years and I think he's the one that referred me the very first person, this lady out in New York, Manhattan, New York. She was the condo queen. And uh, she's like, hey, can you, I was referred to you by Mo. Can you do a banner design for me? And I sold banner advertising. I've just never been on the design fulfillment side. And I remember Mark Cuban said something, and I'm probably going to butcher it. And he kind of inspired me to react this way. It's like a matter of like, just say yes, and it's your specialty. And then if you can, if you think you can figure it out, you'll figure it out and just don't sleep until you deliver. So I'm like, that's easy enough. Let me just say, yes, that's no problem. That's what we specialize in. And then I'm like, what is it that you want? So I know what a banner ad is. It's basically a rectangle of words and a picture. Um, so anyways, I was, didn't know what to charge. I didn't even know what they cost. So I just blurted out $500. And he's like, sure. I'm like, all right, let me get your credit card. But by the way, when I got the credit card, I didn't even actually have a way to process it. It's just from my previous jobs, that was what we did. We took credit cards over the phone. Um, so once we did that, um, we, uh, sorry, I'm just letting people in. Jacob, can you manage the waiting room? There's going to be, as people come in, otherwise I'll get off track a little bit. Um, so we got this call, didn't know what to charge. So I'm like 500 bucks. I immediately hopped onto Google, went from Google, Googled banner ad designers, found some, some dude pay-per-click ad, clicked the top one, top two, top three. Only one dude uh, was still awake because there a lot of these guys were overseas. And I will use the live chat, got the dude's phone number. We hopped on a call. Um, and I basically just said, what does it cost? He's like $25. And I'm like, oof, $25. The only reason I did it that way is so I can actually use my negotiating skills. What's coming next? And I said, all right, I'll, I'm, I'm okay for the first one, paying that fee, your full price. But my only kicker is since I'm a new customer, I want this now. And it's like, everybody's sleeping. I'm like, okay, wake up your best guy. So he woke him up. We did the ad. I personally wrote the copy. This is why I was able to charge $500 is because I would, I would, I made it VIP concierge. And this wasn't because I had a strategy. This is just because that's what I would do anyways. I want to make it, my job is to make life easier for the person that's buying. I want them to buy, get the fuck out of the way. And then I deliver blow their mind, or if they don't like it, redo it. And then I deliver. So my, that was my number one intention was like five-star customer service. Nobody beats us um, uh, on anything. That's why when we set expectations, when I started this story, we would tell people, call us. We're right here. You have, we didn't have any other phone numbers besides our cell phones. So I'm like, you can call us, you can text us. We don't give a shit. If it's midnight, do your thing. That's perfectly fine. Um, so anyways, um, I got the guy to do the design and it got back so fast. And I'm like, holy shit, I ordered this at like, I don't know, noon. 
it's like one in the morning in Pakistan or whatever. I think it was 13 hours difference at that time during the time zone difference. Um, and then, uh, and then it was really good. I had a couple of revisions and I'm like, cool, I can't send this to the clients $500. I can't send it right now. That was way too fast. I wasn't expecting it that quick. So just kind of kicked it for a couple of days, sent it over to her, called her. Um, and I said, got a surprise, got it done early. Cause I told her it would take five business days. It took basically two and a half, three. And then uh, she, she's looked at it. She's like, fuck, I love it. This thing's awesome. I'm like, all right, is that approved? She's like, yes. I'm like, cool. I got a crazy idea. Um, I'm like, have you ever heard of Coca-Cola? Yes, I have. I'm like, have you ever seen a commercial for Coca-Cola? Yes, I have. Have you ever seen that they've actually done more than one commercial? Yes, I have. I'm like, so in Christmas, they have a Christmas theme. In spring, they have a spring theme. In summer, they have a summer theme. I'm like, so what I'm going at this is that the reason a billion dollar brand is a billion dollar brand when they weren't is that they had ads that were not fatigued. Um, so why don't we take a copy out of their book and do four season marketing? I said, yeah, that's a good idea. And I said, you buy three more for me, give you the fourth free. She's like, well, that would be five. And I'm like, I know that. Um, it's because one's going to be for branding. And we went forward. So she spent another $1,500. So I'm like, all right, one client for one, a mistake that I didn't know a referral that we didn't do what they referred us to do. We turned that into a big business that actually ended up becoming like $10 million in banner designs overall, $7 million for one client. So now I'm going to go into that story. So we, we came up with this four seasons marketing theme. Um, now we had been cold calling all of these people off realtor.com, truly a Zillow, all the websites, listing book. I mean, all these sites, some of them don't exist anymore. Um, even Realty Track, the foreclosure based company, like we, we developed all these partnerships, but we created this specialty in a matter of a mistake of a phone call of a referral right away. So we're like, we're the banner experts. We'll write your ad. We'll give you unlimited revisions. We'll get the images off your website. We'll make you look good. We'll make you as the expert. You're already spending so much money on these ads that the only reason they're going to work is because of my design. I already know the intricacies of everything. And why not, why not use us versus somebody who doesn't even use English as their first language? So I was using everything to my advantage. Next thing you know, cold calling, pounding the phones, getting referrals, doing my thing, scrappy as fuck. Um, we had to lower our prices as we went, as competition started to rise um, because there's people doing $5 banners, $10 banners, $100 banners. So we ended up at $150 really quick. Our heyday, I think, was like, I think, I think our biggest banner we ever charged was like two grand, but it was super interactive. We got fancy as fuck. We had like ants going across for like a zoo. It was like ants on a zebra. And then you can click an ant and it would bite the zebra. We had some fancy shit going down. Um, so people saw that our cool work, um, but when they'd order, it would be the cheaper stuff. So anyways, a JPEG ad, 150 bucks. A flash ad was like 350. And then, and then when we got the referrals, we would always give the entry price to the salespeople referring us, Hey, for as low as 150 bucks, they'll get to add. We'll knock that shit out quick, man. Instead of waiting a month for a, a referral of your buddy, that's going to charge them way more. Let's, let's put business ahead of like, get, because you're going to get charged back, give it to us. Um, so when they get to us, we said, all right, it's $150 for this one. But if you wanted to actually stand out much more by the flash, by the animated stuff, that's going to be a little bit more, but then we'll give you the free JPEG anyways, because when you do flash back then you had to submit a backup JPEG in case the flash didn't actually, um, uh, appear on most, on, on most screens. It was a backup measure that the advertiser would get something going. So we had to do that anyways, because all we take is a screenshot. So it was, it was like control screenshot, whatever the button is, and that's it. So we're like, fuck it. We'll just position it as flash plus free. Um, so it allowed us to charge more and they felt like they got to buy one, get one, if you will. Now, when, uh, after probably cold calling, I don't know how many people a day, probably at least, I mean, at least a hundred a day. Um, and we did fulfillment and we did the accounting and we did the trash and we did everything. So we, I personally slept in the office for like five years. Um, when I say slept in the office, cause we actually had a physical office. Um, I was probably sleeping there probably like three to five days a week, five days when we're busy, three days when we weren't. Um, but that was my demeanor. I just did what it took. It sacrificed a lot. Uh, but anyways, that led up to a culmination of this project of, getting a, a knock on the on the door in this case the phone call saying hey we'd like to talk to you 
and have you guys come in. And I didn't, this is when I, I, I no longer had a partner at this stage. Once this deal was coming through, I converted him to an employee and the unique part is he was getting 20% of sales and I was doing most of the sales. So if I did a sale, my negotiation to wipe out his partnership and his equity was because our company is worth pretty much zero dollars. I'm like zero times zero equals zero. So what do you think a CEO title is worth to you? Because that's he wanted to be a CEO. And I'm like, you're, you're a zero dollar CEO. So I said, let me wipe out your college debt. 18,000 bucks is what you owe. Here's 18 large wipe it out. You're done. You're an employee. You get 3k a month plus 20% just doing sales only I'm like fair. So we, we split meaning no longer even working for me. I helped him get a job somewhere else. And now he's doing very well still with that company. Um, and, uh, anyways, I'm thank God that was a blessing in disguise because this big deal, he would have got 20 fucking percent of without doing anything. Um, and he would have probably just chilled at home and never worked because he would have got a huge residual. Uh, but anyways, um, so I got the knock on the door from 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 realtor.com, which was owned by move.com at the time. Um, and then now they think they're owned by Fox, but um, they just brought me in the office and I didn't have a team because it was me. It was me in an office and a computer and three other rooms that were empty. I even had my buddy just sublease a room for me. He helped me put together some some financial models once we actually started negotiating this deal. But um we, uh, we went in the room, met with them. I stayed up all night, printed all this fancy shit, all these testimonials, these cool banners that we've done, handed them this big packet. You know, like I stayed up all night, like writing all this crap, Kinko's, they underslept. I was like, it's gotta be perfect. Get in the room. They didn't even want any of that. I just put it in front of them. And they're like, looked at it, looked up at me. They didn't care. Um, and we negotiated in the room. And the unique part is I was charging $150 for the ads at the time. They negotiated me at $180 per ad at the time. So I'm like, okay, huh, you're going to give me all the clients. I get the backing of you and you're going to pay me $30 more. And you want me to agree to your price. Okay. Not a problem. Well, let's start there. So we got paid a little bit more than what we would have charged if we cold called and got one customer or waited for a referral and got one customer. So we had to wait. We didn't know when the referral was coming in. I couldn't say at two o'clock on Tuesday, a fucking referral was coming. I didn't know when the hell they were coming. A phone would ring. If I didn't answer it, I didn't get it. That's how it works. That's how referrals work. Uh, just in case you guys are working off referrals, people do not wait for you. Because if I'm referred to a real estate agent and you don't answer the phone, guess what I'm doing? I'm already in the mood to buy it. I'm going to go find another one. Because if you don't answer your phone, it's your fucking problem because I don't know you because I got referred to you. Okay. So just make sure you know to answer your phone um, when you are surviving and thriving only off referrals, don't have the ego of voicemails. Um, so we negotiated the deal, $150. And then this is the unique part. This is funny to me because I was closing like 30 deals a month just off of, I mean, a week, not 30 deals a month, 30 deals a week off of cold calling alone. Uh, cause I had a really good presentation pitch on a one call close for a cold call. Cause it was so cheap. And I knew exactly how to, how to talk to that target audience for that product. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, they were like, Hey, we're, we're going to wind down another company we're using. And that was my red flag. I'm like, huh, let me dig into that a little bit. And it was basically a company they bought, they couldn't fulfill or they partnered with, I don't remember if they bought or partnered. Um, and I was like thinking like, well, shit, if you're firing them, you're probably like, I got, I can't get fired. So that actually, that moment where they told me they were going to wind down is when I knew, my service had to be fantastic. So I had to understand their expectations deeper. I'm like, well, what's the expectation on if I got some project from you, what would that actually, what would you want for a turnaround time? And they just laughed and they're like, well, it can only, it can't get worse than what we have now. I'm like, well, what does that mean? And uh, they were just like, well, sometimes the projects don't even get done and it's been 60 days. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like a 30 minute job is taking over 60 days to be able to reach this agent for a product they bought. And then what happens after that happens? The, guess who's going to return it or charge it back them. So they had a major delivery problem. So now they, now I knew more information. Now I knew that I, the money I was actually going to save them from chargebacks was the real reason I was getting hired, not the money they're going to pay me. So now I'm actually not even a cost. I'm actually a profit for them by just having me in the room. So now I already knew the value. So I'm like, okay, I didn't know that information. Otherwise I would have been scared little bitch and walking on eggshells and thinking like, oh man, these guys are the best. Let me suck them off every day. 
now I knew the playing field was a little bit different. So then the way I was going to change the playing field was I was just going to deliver a better product and I was going to do it faster. Um, and I was going to have a phone support system where these people can actually call, talk to a human live on the phone without a screen, without a fucking voice message, without support at customcreators.com. You talk to a fucking human. So I'm like, that's easy. I'm going to keep this thing. Um, so anyways, I closed the deal. I actually brought my dad and then my girlfriend at the time to the meeting because I had nobody that worked for me and I didn't want to look like I was the only one rolling up. Um, I later realized that wasn't necessary. So in case you guys are thinking it's necessary, you don't need to do stuff like that. Um, anyways, uh, so we, they said, we're going to give you the project. We're going to wind this team down and in the next 60 days, you'll start work, but and, and that's it. We'll get you up and running. And I'm like, fuck, 60 days. That's a long time. A lot of things can change. I can get hit by a bus. They could too. And then nobody will know this deal went down. Attorney drafted up the paperwork, signed it. Um, next thing you know, when I leave the meeting, um, I, I, my office was about, I don't know, five miles away, maybe a little bit less, like one exit off a freeway away from that, from their office. So physical meetings was, was easy. And they were interviewing people from all over the country, from Wisconsin to New York to everything. I was the last in the room. Um, so I, and I didn't know that I had no clue. Uh, I didn't even ask. And, um, and, and then anyways, by the time I got back to the office, I got a call on my cell phone and the guy was like, Hey man, um, we're actually starting today we're giving you a list of 60 clients. These are the backlog that nobody's called. They're dead. If you can save them, amazing, get the work done. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I just hammered through all 60, called them in the afternoon, called them in the evening. I had no regard for time. I didn't give a shit if it was fucking midnight where you were. I'm calling you. I don't really fucking care because you just spent a shit ton of money. And if I woke you up, you should thank me for getting your project done. That's what I changed my mentality. I'm like, I didn't care. Time didn't matter. I wasn't trying to be inappropriate. But I was trying to be more like, hey, if you're awake and you're a real estate agent and you're saying you work 24 seven, hmm, I'll take it to heart. They work 24 seven. And uh, anyways, the the uh, that model worked like we didn't get a hold of that whole list. It was impossible. Some people just burned their money and spent money on Realtor.com and then uh, do anything about it. Um, and the end result was I ended up hiring a guy who interned for me. He was a high school kid. He interned for me. And this is where the game changed for building the whole business. Um, and he, he, uh, he used to live down the street for me and he went, oh, he was probably 18 or so probably college level. So I called him out of the blue. I'm like, yo man, where are you at? I'm like, roll up to my office. I'm hiring you. He's like, well, I moved. I'm like, I'm like an hour and a half away. I'm like, what do you do? He's like, I work at Amber Crombie and Fitch. I'm like, so you full clothes for a living dude. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I know you're fucking those clothes up. You're probably like stuffing them under other clothes because I know you. And he starts laughing. And I'm like, all right, when do you, I'm like, I need you to work for me. And I need you to work for me tonight. And he's like, dude, I got a shift tomorrow. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're not showing up for that shift. You're either going to do one of two things, nothing and quit and just come over and not even tell them. I mean, you're folding clothes. How hard is it to find somebody else to fold fucking clothes? Um, or number two, quit on them. Just say, hey, I found another job. I'm quitting. Peace out. I'm not showing up to my shifts. You have those two options. I'm like throw your shit in a trash bag and you're coming to my house. Um, threw it in a trash bag. Lo and behold, showed up later that night. Next day, we started hammering the calls. Then we put together a system like, hey, we're, we're little broken toys here because we're figuring it. We're building the plane as we're flying. So we put together a whole entire SOP and it turned into, I'll fast forward a little bit, it turned into a 70 man operation. Um, within like three or four months. So it was really fast because we had to hit the backlog. But then since we were now doing all the work, we actually had to fulfill on the new log. So we had to prioritize. Our baseline was, we're not going to be judged by the shit that you gave us because that's not acceptable to us. We're going to be judged on the new fresh blood that you give us, fresh leads. Because the way we set things up is you sell your product, we immediately get paid when the order comes to us. So I actually didn't even have to finish the project to actually get paid the way we did it. The moment we reach the client, the moment we can put it onto our spreadsheet for billing. Um, so that was the, the, the way we did it with them. Um, and then when we, if the client didn't approve the, the, the design, we still got paid, but we wanted it to get approved. So we had an aggressive system where it was like, lead comes in, one person calls as the order taker. They get the specs. Then they give it to 
a, a, per, a quality assurance person to make sure like the phone number is correct, the spelling of the name is correct, the graphics are match that person's graphics from their website. Um, and then once it went to this person, then it went to some, then it went to our designer. When it went to the designer, they would design it, then it came back, then it went to a quality assurance person. Once it went to a quality assurance person, that quality assurance person would upload the design to a, a link and deliver it to the deliver it to the client. After it got delivered to the client, it then went to an outbound caller that says, hey, Angel, we just delivered your banner. I need you to take a few minutes to look at it. Can you check it now while I'm on the phone with you? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, look at the ad. I'm going to let you look at it as long as you need. We have a couple minutes here. Any changes or is it approved? And people say, no, it's approved. I'm like, you certain? Yes. Okay, cool. Can you send an email right now? Hit reply to all saying, I love it. This is approved. You guys are the bomb. And then we would screenshot those things. Back then, screenshots on cell phones and Facebook weren't really a thing. But we would keep those things in a folder called Love Us. If we got any positive remark, we had a folder called Love Us. Um, and the reason we kept that folder wasn't necessarily to scout new business and tell people they loved us, but it was, I, I was planning for corporate life because corporate life likes to blame people. So I'm like, I need to cover my ass. So when I got these compiled testimonials, then I would forward them randomly. I'm like to the, to the senior or the head of sales or national president of sales for the company. And I'd say, man, your customers are so pleasant. And then that was my subtle way of saying, we're the fucking shit. And then he would reply back saying, dude, this is amazing. Great job, team. And that was the mental like role I was doing. That was how I was keeping the customer. Great job, team. Great job, team. Great job, team. So when we did fuck shit up, they weren't going to yell at us and say, dude, you guys are the worst. I prevented it because I was proactive in doing this little strategy to get a pat on the back. Um, and that worked really well because realtor.com and big, huge corporations, sometimes they go through vendors like a knife, a hot knife goes through butter. It's very quick. It's very easy. Um, so, so that was my prevention model and it worked pretty well. It lasted like three years or so. Um, so it was a nice little gravy train. Um, but now I'm going to deconstruct like how this, how this all came about because this isn't very hard because I've duplicated it. I've duplicated it and not necessarily with the same success as a big, huge unicorn um, deal. We've come very close to this type of, of, of revenue mark with another clients, but we've had million dollar clients. We've had 750, $500,000 clients over time. Now, the way we've done it is we find an angle to find a partner. And all we simply do is seeing what we like to do, like banner ads. I didn't really care about or like even, I just like the concept of marketing. So banners was just like a little part of it. And then I got to farm it all out. So, oh, one quick thing. Oh, this is kind of unique and funny. And this is going to go speak to the price that you guys are charging. People will pay a higher price because when I was being referred by realtor.com, homes.com, zillow.com, all these different big ass fucking companies, um, all I did was like become friends with the salespeople. That was the key component. I went bottom to the top. Meaning I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk to the person at the lowest end of the total pole to get their buy-in because once I find the right salesperson that has the ear of that regional manager or that, that president of sales or whatever, I may come up in a meeting, how great the fulfillment is, how satisfied Johnny, the sales rep for Zillow's customers are saying, yeah, dude, like this guy, this guy, Rahul custom creatives, these guys knock out really good banners and our click through rate is higher than the shit we do. It's higher than the freelancer. That's my buddy from high school or college. So that's how, and I would say, Hey, tell your friends about me. Don't keep me a secret, man. Don't be selfish take care of a buddy. So they'd refer me and then refer me and refer me. So that's why I always wanted to know the sales reps because sales reps, what do they do? They talk for a living and guess what they like to be resourceful. So I would teach them how to be resourceful. Um, so I'd go, I, it was a lot of work, like figuring out who's who and talking to a stranger over a phone and no FaceTime or did we really didn't use zoom or anything back then. Um, but uh, it worked out pretty well. So the, I was on the vendor list. I was the number one vendor for the people that knew me. Other people chose other people that they may have known as the number one vendor, but they always had to have three. Um, and they can go more than three. Minimum was the three for, for a publicly traded company or somebody who has like big capital partners so they don't 
play like favorites or anything or get in trouble. I don't know how the rules worked, but there were three for some reason. Um, and the guy who was either number two and three, depending on the list, um, everybody had the same guy. It was, it was the guy I was outsourcing to for $25. So I was like, fuck my guy, the guy I use is, is on this list. I'm charging higher. He's charging lower before we got the formal relationship. When I was charging 500 bucks, and they, he was charging 25 fucking dollars for the same fucking graphic designer, same designer. But when they did stuff, I noticed there were mistakes. And I noticed that like the delays on the turnaround time. But when people went through me to go through him, I had everything spelled correctly. I knew the market. I knew where to put the photo. I knew that there was rules in some states like Texas and Jersey. You had to have the MLS ID number on there. You had to have the office number and the brokerage address, all kinds of crazy shit. So I knew the rules. So I knew how to make things easier because a lot of people would put banners up like, oh, take it down and then say you missed all this. They could get a penalty, a fine, all this crap. So I knew all that stuff ahead of time. And if I didn't know it, I would ask it. Are there any laws we need to do? So my whole point is they were paying me 500 and that dude 25. So I basically made a VIP five-star experience where they can talk to me on the phone. I'll write the offer. I'll design it. I would literally would draw this shit on a little piece of paper. I would take a picture of it and send it to my designer. That was how I designed ads. I didn't know I'm not a designer. I still haven't looked at Photoshop yet, but we've done hundreds of thousands of ads um, because we have a good system. So anyways, I negotiated the $25 vendor. I said, I want you to have your normal turnaround time with them. Keep it at seven to 10 days. I like that for them. But when I send you business, I want it in 24 hours. That's my rule. And I'll give you all my business. So instead of you having a referral randomly from all these hundreds of people that you're getting from hundreds of different industries, um, because you're so cheap and you advertise a lot, um, I'll be one customer that my pay-per-click to become your customer for your acquisition was probably 50 bucks to get me. And I'm going to use you for $25 times thousand for all I know. So there's 25 grand for that $50 click to make me a customer. And all I'm asking is give me 24 hour turnaround time and unlimited revisions. And I want to be, I want my revisions just as fast, if not faster than the original design. So we agreed to that. So I, I use that vendor. I use that leverage of being a good customer up front. Got it. So like if somebody sent, if they were referred directly, that's 10 days. But if you go through me, you pay the premium, but I do all the fucking work, the realtor, the agent, the mortgage broker, the, the national advertiser, like Hondas, they, well, they have to think because they give us assets. But, but my point being is if you don't have like that corporate branding guidelines, like the realtors and a lot of mortgage brokers have, um, then you can, you can, make shit up for them and come up with better ideas than they, they, they do. Because I know those realtors, if somebody's like the queen of condos, what do you do for a living? I'm a realtor. What do you sell? Everything. Where do you sell to? The United States. All of a sudden they do everything everywhere. So we had to narrow them down. So we'd find that rhythm of what's going to actually work. So we'd niche the niche for the realtor. I'm a realtor. Great. What do you sell? Everything. What is the most common thing you sell? Condos. How many condos did you sell last year? 24. How many do you want to sell next year? 30. Okay, cool. Let's be the condo queen. Sweet. I just gave you a fucking name too while we're at it. So that's what we had to do. We had to teach adults their own, what they do for a living. So I'm sure you guys, I don't know if you guys resonate with that as well out there. Um, and feel free to ask questions in the chat and make any comments. Smash the heart button. I forgot to tell you, you guys are live. I see some of you guys live. Let's get a comment, smash the heart button, hashtag live, hashtag replay. Totally forgot about that. Um, but uh, that, that's, that's, that's a, like, so I negotiated to have leverage and the story all leads up to something. Once I got the account, we built a whole like Henry Ford power plant, like I mentioned before, and described the service and like each role and responsibility. We had SOPs because we were hiring 18, 19 year old people that weren't going to college. Um, and they were friends of the kids that we hired at the time. So it was kind of like a little frat house, if you will, because everybody was so informal, board shorts, t-shirts were the, were, the, were the law, the jungle of the dress code. If you wanted to wear jeans, you were fancy. Uh, the only rule we had was, don't hop on social media and don't text your friends while you're getting paid. That's my only rule. And people who did got fired and people who got fired cried because they, all their friends worked there. And I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't bring you back because it would make me look bad. If I fire you and then bring you back and saying, Hey, the rules don't apply to anyone now. So I'm like, you already knew the warning We're, we could be three strikes. We could be one. We don't know. But we'll just fire you if you don't follow the fucking rules. Life's unfair. Um, 
so now let's deconstruct how we get clients for you guys. Um, anybody have any questions so far? And if you do, just drop them in the chat. Um, and there's going to be in the guides tab. I want you to look in the guides tab. Guide number one is a 10 minute video that will give you some more information as well. But if I were, let's say anybody here and I want to target an audience, there's something called the dream 100 and you can start with like one person or 10 or 30. I'd probably start with like at least 20. Um, so I would find, what is it I do if you want to use this strategy? So I'm going to give you an exact example of, of me reaching out to agency owners, my exact competition. If I look at their website and it looks like exactly what I do, that's who I want to sell to. Because the point being is when people sell, like when we buy bananas from the store at Vaughn's or Albertsons or Piggly Wiggly or 7-Eleven or whatever you buy it, they didn't make the fucking banana. The, there's a distributor that sold it to them. And guess where that distributor got it from? Another distributor. And guess where that distributor got it from? Like maybe somewhere in Colombia. Where, where did that Colombian get it from? A farmer. So look at the chain of events of outsourcing that just occurred to eat a banana. There's a lot of layers. So I looked at that as the same way how marketing works. When I look at a marketing agency, and my assumption is you do a little bit in-house, you do a lot with contractors. So I was like, okay, let me just operate under that assumption going in. So I'd approach people and saying, hey, I see you do this. I find the pain first. And I'll give you a couple of examples. I'll find the pain. I'll say, hey, you guys do an amazing job at display. I saw your case studies. Who does your designs? They'd say, I, we have contractors. Cool. Would it be okay with you if I do some free ones for you? Let me do two or three. Yes. Okay. Well, if I now, before I do them, is there an opportunity that I can have your long term business to be able to actually be your partner in design uh, if you like it? Yes, that would be opportunity. Okay, cool. What's that opportunity look like? How many units do you need per month? I need one. Okay, you know what? It's not a good fix. We're looking for people who need like 20 or more. Okay, move on. Next one. Same conversation. What's the opportunity? Well, we do about 40 a month. I'm like, okay, you loyal to any contractors? You're just kind of using freelancers from project to project. Like we have a couple that we choose from. Okay, like would you, would it make sense if like we were able to have a higher quality, better customer service and whatnot? And if you like our design, um, would we be able to have the opportunity to maybe be exclusive because we have a company and a team rather than having a freelancer? Because if they, if they break their leg or grandma gets sick, guess what happens to your project? You're up shit creek. Your client's pissed. Your launch date's missed. Um, but with us, if anything happened to me, the show and the party goes on. If my head designer disappeared and quit, guess what? I have one, another one lurking in the background. We have the whole system and process. So you don't have to, like you eliminate delays. You eliminate like one perspective of talent, which is the freelancer. They're going to have a common style. We have a diversification because we have multiple really good designers. So I was looking for contrast and I was opening up gaps of pain as to why it doesn't make sense to work with a freelancer. Now, if I was a freelancer, I'd be the opposite. I'll like, say, don't you hate it when these bigger companies have all these different multiple styles so the consistency's off? Don't you hate it when like, they, they're, they're not up at midnight like I am and when you guys demand like 24 seven because you're an agency, sometimes clients are crazy. So I would leverage it the opposite. So go with your strengths so you can do the same. Um, and I'll tailor this back to whatever it is you do. If you sell go high level SaaS, you sell some sort of chat widgets, Find your angle of your ideal customer. I'm just going to tell you who mine is so you can think for yourselves. Um, but yeah, I'd go with the, the, the graphics. And the graphic was my entry point. That wasn't my destination. That wasn't what I wanted to end up with, with $200, $300, $500 fucking banners. I wanted more. I knew they had more, but I had to earn some trust. Dating analogy. And I wasn't going to say, give me your, your whole life's work of business. Um, okay, cool. Later, Jacob. Triage away, brother. Um, and, uh, and, uh, anyways, uh, I would go to the agency. I would get them to give me a free project. I would do the project. I would say, Hey, it's been sent on email, but I never attached it because I wanted to make sure they were available. They replied back saying, Hey, nothing attached. So then I'd give them a call. I'd say, okay, cool. Let me try resending it with you on the phone. Um, boom, click it. Um, I would send it. And then I'd say first take, like, what's your, what, what do you, what do you think? I love it. What do you love about it? 
okay, cool. Awesome. Like now it doesn't make sense to move forward with our conversation. Can we now get in bed with you guys to do this and take this whole process over and I'll share with you how we can actually get intake the specs without you guys having to do too much work. It'll get delivered to us. We'll deliver it to you in our normal turnaround time. It's three to five business days. Does that sound fair? Uh, but yeah, of course. That same process led to us doing banners for Geico, Google, Verizon, Montblanc, um, dealerships. I mean, everybody that you can, a lot of names you can think of, we've done an ad for. And it doesn't mean we're actually like Geico's our client and we're going to tout that, woo, we got Geico, like millions of other websites do because they did like 50 bucks of work or thousand dollars worth of work. We did recurring projects for like two years with them. Once the, the creative director and the whole marketing regime of the division I was working with changed, vendors get wiped out with it. And I couldn't recover it with the new regime because they wanted to bring in their buddies, kind of like a political election. Biden's going to bring in his people. Trump brought in his people. Fire everybody. Fuck them all. That's how it was. New power, new blood. I'm out. You do your best to stay there. But that's why you have diversification. I put all my eggs in the realtor.com basket, by the way. Um, well, I, I, when I lost that deal, that $7 million deal, um, I knew it was coming. They told me it was coming. I made such good relationships with them that they told me in six months, you're losing it because we're moving on. We acquired a design web development company called Top Producer. They have a hundred designers. Half of them are just sitting there on their fucking hands doing nothing. Like we want you to stay, but the new CEO that's coming in, who is the president founder of that company is now going to be firing your ass and you got a, you got a target on your head and it's going to be hit. So do your thing, plan ahead. I just figured eh, it's never going to happen. Day came. Hey, last bill due. That was it. I'm like, fuck. All right. So I went when I knew the reality struck, it was the very next day. I just went to the park down the road, kicked it for an hour by myself. I'm like thinking, I'm like, I got a lot of people to fire right now. I'm like, I don't want to do that. That kind of sucks. Um, let me just bleed it out a little bit. And then I ended up uh, uh, just chilling, thinking for like, I, it felt like an hour, but it must have been more. Um, and came back to the office and I'm like, all right, we'll cold call everybody. We're just going to upsell, get logos, get anything, ban like Twitter, Twitter banners across the top, Facebook banners across the top. We're just going to go, everybody's going to go call, call everybody, pick up the phone and dial anyone who will answer, sell them something. Um, that, that got us not very far. Um, cause that turns out a lot of people that didn't want to buy it. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we started getting rid of people that we would have never kept had like, we would have never kept anyways in the long run. It was just because they were really good at this one little role that didn't exist anymore. It just didn't have any value. So we kept like maybe five or six people stayed on for a while. Um, but then we pivoted right away because we went from, like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month from one client to zero dollars. And we had to really go back to the drawing board of being fed so much order taking to now having to restart and pivot. And what ended up happening is we um, took about a week or so to get our shit together in terms of our pivot strategy. And then we closed a big deal, just almost equally as large in a whole different industry, a whole different category. Um, and then we needed new talent. So we had to inherently eliminate the team that we had, not because we wanted to, it definitely wasn't fun, um, but it wasn't fair to them. It wasn't fair to us because we were paying for something we didn't need and they were doing something that pretty much nothing. Um, and then ultimately we uh, um, hired a whole different type of talent um, that worked out. And during this time, this time I didn't fuck around I built the whole big business. Um, I built a digital marketing agency around this. This is what we're doing like SEO. So I had a team, a marketing director, because I had the cash flow, I had sales, um, and they would, I'd buy leads, we'd advertise, um, and then we would just get a bunch of clients. So we built up a good recurring database that if we lost it all again from our unicorn client, our, our sustainability of all the smaller clients could balance it. Um, and we were operating like literally building a plane as it was flying. So when I, when I tell you that, I truly mean it. Half the, all, like all the stuff we've ever offered and sold, we, we would just, people would ask us, do you do this? We just say yes. And we didn't, we didn't do that stuff. We just say, yes, we'll figure it out, figure it out, turn it into service. And we just sprinted. We're like, oh, we didn't know what the price SEO at. So we're charging 500 fucking dollars. We thought that was a lot. Then we were paying our vendor a hundred dollars. 
We're like, oh, dude, this is $400. Then we we're paying our salesperson $100 a month. We're like, oh, that's not enough. So we're like, fuck, they want 200. So we're like, shit, we're not making much as a company now. So then we had to go to $1,000 and we went to $1,500. Then we went to $10,000. And now we have packages that 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 are that can be elastic based on what we think we can do. Um, but we were just flying at the seat of our pants. We just knew that we wouldn't sleep until we could actually deliver on that service. So when you go to your ideal customers, your ideal, ideal partners, find the angle of their pain. That's all it is, is finding the angle of their pain and just having a friendly conversation with them. And once you do, and if they are willing to try you, then you're going to have uh, an opportunity to close a deal, then they bring you in as their trusted authority in that particular service that you're doing. Uh, because when I closed a, a company in Northern Walnut Creek or Northern California somewhere, um, like I, I started again, my banner angle, let me do the designs. Then guess what happened? What else do you do? Well, we can do fulfillment because a lot of people like to look at us as their partner um, when it comes to running SEO campaigns and maybe some Google ads. So then they started outsourcing SEO campaigns and they're like, what does it cost? And I'm like, well, what type of clients are you looking at? And then they were dealing with bigger clients. So I'm like, okay, well, would $5,000 be something your clients can pay, but then you add your markup on top of that. It's so like, hell yeah, they would charge 10 grand a month. I'm like, holy fuck, how do you sell that for 10 grand? That's crazy. I mean, they even taught me how to sell bigger deals because they were saying 10 grand. I'm like, shit. And you're, you're not even doing anything. I'm doing all the work. So I'm like, maybe I can find them straight away without you. So I brought them, I, this client brought us on, we were doing their Google ads, their Facebook ads, their um, uh, SEO for their clients. And then we had video people that we would bring in that we would contract to um, and make margins off of it. So we'd say, buy from them they pay us or you pay us, et cetera. So there was like a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, money opportunities and we were just trying to stay sane so we don't fuck anything up. We don't want to take on shit we wouldn't be able to do. We just got really good at being a quarterback. We quarterback deals really well. Um, so that was the important part is having a project system where people take responsibility for what they're supposed to do. See you, Cuddy. Um, and then... Um, that became really critical because like my, my dad always used to talk about have, taking the monkey off your back because if he delegated something to somebody and they didn't do it and they didn't finish it, that just means they just decided to say, I tried, I failed, fuck you, it's back on you. So the reality is, no, you, you don't try and fail. You try, you don't get the result you want. You keep doing it until it's yours. You own the project. You don't get to give it back. Um, so that's what we decided. We were good at quarterbacking. We'd tell people, this is what I need done. I need it done by this. I don't care how, what, how many calls, how many touch points, how many, anything it takes, go do it, get it done. Don't put the monkey back on my back. Um, and if you have need support, you can reach out to me. But if you do reach out to me, you're not giving it to me. You're staying on it. It's your job. And that's how you're going to get paid. Um, so we made sure that that was abundantly clear. Um, and we wanted to get partners that were on board with us. Um, that we can outsource and make more money off of so that we didn't have to actually stress out and stay up all night. The client's pissed. And if a client, if, if any freelancer or any vendor we contracted to said, Oh, I can get it to you in 24 hours. Guess what we told the client seven days, because we don't want that freelancer to get another job. And they prioritize that and never tell us we were just anticipating a problem that could happen. And if they did it on time, we're like, Oh, this guy's reliable. Um, his communication is really good. So sometimes we don't know. Sometimes people, good people disappear on you. So we're planning for that. Um, and people were okay when we set the expectation. If people wanted 911 shit, guess what we did? Charge you more, charge you double. You need it tomorrow? Fuck. If I put you in front of the line, do you know how many people I got to call to set their expectations differently? That's a lot of work for me. I'm willing to do it. But if it's going to be 1500 for the video, it's going to be 3000 for Rush. It's a lot of money. Are you sure you want to pay for that? Yes. Okay doubled our income, just told the freelancer, hey, you're going to get double on this one. Hurry the fuck up. You're, then we're not calling anybody. You're just going to not sleep tonight if you want the extra double. So they would do it. So that's how we basically got shit done. Um, but yeah, going to the partners. So it, it, it go with an entry point. That's my number one 
takeaway for, or I want that to be your number one takeaway. You can literally do this all off cold calling, all off cold emailing. Um, if you want something to get done, don't wait for it because it's just not going to happen. You'll blink of an eye, you'll 10 years later, shoulda, woulda, coulda, things got harder. That's just how life is. When I was thinking, I've been documenting about how I'm just going to start a side hustle um, just for fun, no, because I want to actually duplicate this so I can actually share it with my, my internal team so they can start their own Amazon stores and make extra income. Um, so I'm, I'm biting, I'm laying on the sword of failure to make it work um, so, so they can make a, a, a bigger living too. Um, but my point being, I don't know where I was going with that Amazon store. Maybe it was just a plug, but you guys can watch that journey. Um, I'm just going to learn a new skill. We might as well talk about it now. I'm just going to learn a new skill, figure out this Amazon thing. I'm plan I, I underestimated what it's going to take. Um, I thought it would be higher VA. They do all the work. I pay them. I get paid. Now it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> so I severely underestimated the time commitment I'm going to have to put into it. But my, my, my heart and my passion is lying in the coaching and the marketing. So now I've hired myself for a third job to figure this Amazon thing. So I'm going to spend a couple hours a day or night. I'll sleep less, wake up earlier or something to supplement it. Um, but I'll share that journey with you guys too. It's going to be on my, my Facebook homepage. But anybody got any questions around this shit? Because this is too easy. My whole point is just get shit done. Imperfect action, fail fast, because nothing's going to come to you unless you go to it. Uh, more people know you, the better. If people don't buy from you, maintain that relationship because like the realtor.com thing took me three years of calling the, the bottom of the barrel sales reps, befriending them, seeing them at a bar, um, buying them a beer, all that stuff, that PR, um, it led to that contract. And then I did the same thing with other contracts, send them a uh, gift, send them a, a picture of themselves on a fucking fat head. Um, just things to stand out. I didn't really like to buy people material. I like to buy experiences. So materials are like a, a watch or a, something fucking stupid, like buying this microphone for somebody because they're not going to really, that's not really, that's too easy to do. It's too common. That's, that's, that's a pussy way out to me. Um, the real way to do emotional connection is send them a picture of the, like a fat head or a bobble head. You can go on Groupon or Google it or Etsy or something and buy this stuff fairly cheap. But if you compare it to cost per lead, um, it, uh, it'll, it'll be pretty fairly, it'll be che probably cheaper than, than what, what it costs sometimes on digital. Cause like right now, if I want to get a phone call booked for my team, it'll cost me $100 for somebody who doesn't know who we are to get on a phone with us. And if they don't show up, then our cost per lead goes up because now we have to pay people to call them and, and follow up and wonder why the fuck they didn't honor their goddamn commitments, which is goes through ahead. Like, why do you book an appointment when you have no intention to show up? Um, then number two is um, if we don't reach them, then it increases everything else, um, the cost per, per, per result. Um, when it costs like for a, a fat head might cost me $10 plus sometimes they charge 20 shipping. Um, or sometimes if you buy bulk, you can get lower shipping. Uh, but if you send them a fat head or something, they'll keep it on their wall. Their wife will make fun of it. They're, they'll, they'll remember it is my point. Bobblehead, it'll sit on their desk for the rest until they die or sell their company, right? Um, a watch, it's too unemotional. It gives a fuck. It's way more expensive too. Uh, but for, for 30, 50 bucks, you can, you can literally not be forgotten or you could get the call back. Um, and I'm going to give another example of how I was able to get, um, uh, meet the, the, like there's an interview I did. I did it a while ago, but I lost the real footage, the video editor that I used that filmed this live for me, um, lost it too. So I fucked up by not backing my shit up and a uh, dope ass interview, but I found the raw footage. I'll share it with you guys, whoever wants it. If you do CEO of Sony or former CEO of Sony home entertainment group and MGM home entertainment group. So kind of a big deal, the large, two largest brands in the world for really entertainment. And I sat at the bar. I'm going to give you an example of what you guys can do right now. It's not me talking about me. I'm going to do this shit anyway. So I want to share it with you guys. Um, I'm at a bar, so I'm finding, an, I'm always like, I'm not networking in business mode on every day, I'm having fucking drinks, getting drunk. Uh, and, uh, I, my buddy that I was with, we we're meeting up, uh, he got on a call or did something, wasn't sitting next to me. And then there was an older gentleman next to me and I looked over and, uh, he had a bottle of wine. I'm like, like your style, dude, you're going to drink that whole thing, aren't you? He's like, yeah. And, uh, I'm like, what do you do? He's like, I'm retired. I'm like, life must be good. 
uh, I'm like, uh, what are you retired from? And he's like, oh, I used to work at this company called Sony. I'm like, I'm like, don't, don't, I'm like, of course I know Sony, man. I'm like, what did you do for them? And he's like, well, I used to be their CEO. I'm like, what? You used to be the CEO of Sony? And, uh, and I'm like, what did you do before that? He's like, well, I was the president and CEO of MGM Home Entertainment Group. I'm like, shit, how, how long you didn't been doing that? Or how long did you do that? He's like, well, 20 years combined, 10, at e- 10 years at each company. I'm like, damn. And then anyways, we're chatting about just screwing around, chatting about whatever. Um, I don't remember why he was drinking alone or his wife wasn't there or something. I don't know what happened. But anyways, dude goes to the bathroom and I grabbed the bartender. I'm like, yo, bartender, um, uh, this dude right here, um, I don't need, I didn't even catch his name, but what's his tab at? And, uh, they're like, like 75, $76. I'm like, cool, run it right now on my credit card. Hurry up. And, uh, they ran it. I tipped it. And I said, give me a piece of paper, a blank receipt. They printed that extra receipt from the receipt thing. I wrote a note. I said, Hey man, really nice to meet you. Um, I would love to connect further, maybe do an interview with you. Um, and I said, here's my number. If you'd like to connect, left my cell phone. And I said, when he goes to pay, give him the thing and put this in it with the note. And then right away, the dude ended up texting me. He's like, classy move. I'd love to connect. Um, so those are little angles where you create partnerships. And when I met him, I said, let's do an interview. I'm going to advertise this interview. I'm going to get us like tens of thousands of views on this interview. And he looked at me, he's like, can I please just pay for it? And I'm like, no, why would you do that? He's like, well, why would you advertise me in an interview that you would pay your money? Let me do it. Let me pay for it. So now we're actually at the relationship. It's like, no, who's going to pay like a tab? Like we're almost friends. And I said, don't worry about it. I'm like, here, can I tell you why this is so selfish of me? And you're going to bring me more value than I bring you. He's like, yeah. I'm like, because people may not know your particular name unless they do, but they know Sony, they know MGM. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to leverage the shit out of that, that you and I are boys and put this on the internet. Like we know each other well, and it's going to be almost like the Oprah effect. She's a nobody interviewing somebody's until she became the somebody. Um, so I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so selfishly, I'll get a bunch of business. You'll get a bunch of business and we both win. And he's like, that's brilliant. He's like, I need to introduce you to some, some fancy department at USC college. You should be talking to them because I think their marketing needs help. So it's like USC. Then it went into, well, maybe we work together. Maybe we do an online program for you and teach your empathy and leadership skills. So that's where all this stuff leads. Um, that's a partnership, right? So I found an angle to do an interview with a badass, and then now it can lead to something else. Now I can go on Yelp. I can go on Google and, and watch. Like uh, you, You'll see some, some interviews come up. Now I have some, a Rolodex of some people I like. A lot of people haven't heard of them. Um, but they're going to, I'm starting a podcast because I have easy access to get guests now, um, because I'm timing it around a time where I don't have to struggle to get a really good quality guest. And guess what I'm going to do with these guests. And if these guests hear this, I hope you do guess what I'm going to do. Even if we don't know each other very well, but we've known each other through a couple mutual friends or talked or met at an event, what I'm going to end up doing is we're going to talk 10 minutes before the podcast. We're going to get to know each other, like what we're up to now even though we may not know, then we're going to uh, do the podcast. We're going to end the podcast. We're going to joke around, have some fucking fun. Um, and guess what we're going to do? I'm going to say, Hey, look, how do we, how do we work together? How do I get you business? How do you get me business? Because we do the same shit, but there's big enough pie for all of us. What do you suck at that you wish you could farm out? What do I suck at that? I wish I can give you, maybe it could be, you're really good at Cairo and I'm really good at everything else. Maybe you're really good at Facebook and I can take your SEO business. So that's all I'm, I'm going to do that with every single person. So if they're hearing this, that's what you're going to be expected. Be prepared. I'll be prepared. Ask me for business and I'll ask you for business. And if you get me one client, I already know that could be a, a 60K annual contract. It could be 120K. It could be 500K. I don't know. But the whole point is that can lead to one client that can lead to two to three to four to five to referrals to other people like them. And that's how the whole fucking show goes. So if we spent 11 hours a day figuring out who the hell we can reach out to besides scroll trapping on TikTok or Netflix, or whatever the fuck is getting distracted for people, if that's you, if it's not you, I'm not trying to make an assumption it is, but the point is spend 11 hours a day instead of doing stupid ass shit, because we're not like broke people are busy. They're just busy doing the wrong shit. 
So we just got to get active. We got to fail. We got to go like a wrecking ball. Miley Cyrus, play that song for me, guys. Play Miley Cyrus, I came in like a wrecking ball. That's what you need to do. So when I compare myself to athletes, I compare myself to like Brett Favre, if you will. And I'm not a quarterback. I have a terrible arm. It's just more of a symbolism because the dude has more interceptions, I think, than anyone in NFL history. But he's a Hall of Fame, Super Bowl winning fucking quarterback. The reason I compare myself is like I, I call him a gunslinger. He just chucks shit up. Somebody's going to catch it, either the defense or his team. One of those two things, I mean, other than the incompletion, but one of those two things are going to happen. And that's how I, how I outreach. One of the couple things are going to happen. There's going to be probably three things. Number one, they're going to say yes. Let the least likely thing that's going to happen is the yes. Number two, they're going to say no. Number three, they're going to hang up on me. And I'm okay with all three. I like number one, because that's where I get the business, but I'm okay with all three. I need the other two. So I know what not to do. So every time I, if I offend somebody, then I'll say, Hey, I don't mean to offend you. So now I just attempt, I just anticipated that I'm going to offend them possibly because I'm about to say something. So I just tell them ahead of time, don't mean to offend you, but I got to ask. Or if I did already offend them and I said something really inappropriate, I'm like, Whoa, that wasn't my intention. Sorry. It came out that way. My bad. So, so that's how I go hardcore. So I have the defense and offense at the same time, all ready to go. And all I have to do is literally like on a Saturday, I can pick up the phone and call a lot of people or on a Sunday or on a Monday or on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday, because the one thing that I hate about this time of year is the fact that there's a new year's resolution as a motherfucking excuse. Oh, we'll get it in first quarter. Oh, the year's ending. I got fucking vacation. Bullshit. If you don't have what you want, you don't deserve a vacation. You got to keep going. What, what is, what is that going to do? That's just going to create a badass habit where you're just going to continue to not make decisions. So New Year's resolutions are the dumbest shit in the world. It's a marketing ploy. Um, it's for people to intentionally fail because now they're putting a point in time to be successful. Imagine if it was October. And somebody said, oh, my New Year's resolution is to get fit. It's like, dude, you're going to you're gonna get diabetes if you don't start fucking now. What does January 1st have to do with it? What the fuck does that have to do? I'll be successful on January 1st. Well, you're not going to be because you're not a decision maker. You're going to fail. That's it. You're going to move it. Oh, well, I'm too busy. I didn't realize January 1st is a Saturday. Okay, great excuse. Great one. So you just formed a really good habit of being not disciplined. And, and that's what entrepreneurship or successful people are about is discipline. You do the things you say you're going to do when you're going to do it, even when you don't want to do it and you do it over a long period of time. With my team, discipline means you, you don't get to earn the word discipline until you've done something that you've committed to for one entire year, 365 straight days. If you're going to go to the gym at seven in the morning, every single day, the only thing you have is going to be like death and disease. Those are the only two things, or, or, or maybe a, a car accident, like an injury. Those are the only two th reasons or three reasons you can miss your gym. Because if you miss your gym, guess what's going to happen when you come work for me? You're going to miss the fucking appointment. So everybody on my team has to do an hour a day in the gym. They have to, because I need their, their minds healthy and clear. I need them fit so they can come to work. And when they're fit, they're in better moods. They're more aggressive. They're more tenacious when it comes to learning. And that's the other thing, one hour fitness, one hour learning. Those are the two things that matter, mind and body. The rest is up to them. Their balance of life is up to them. If they want to work 24 seven and neglect their family, that's up to them. I don't care because balance comes over time. You could be perfectly imbalanced. I was perfectly imbalanced. I lived in a fucking office, didn't show up to Christmas dinners. I don't regret one, one ounce of that. I would do it again. I would miss every Christmas dinner. I don't give a shit because I wanted to be successful. Now I can make all of them. Now I'm not too busy to hang out. So that's my, my jam. I got a, I'm actually already late for a call myself. I'm sure they probably text me. Nope. They actually didn't text me. Okay. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it here for a minute. Then you guys live here have any questions. Hopefully this inspired you. And this isn't supposed to be inspiring. This is actually supposed to be um, action oriented. So the point being is I, I went through the background. This was like me interviewing me, I guess, um, mostly, but the point being is find that partner. One partner can change your whole entire trajectory. It can give you the confidence and boost what you think you're capable of to actually make it reality. And the real thing is start before you're ready because I had no employees closed a monster publicly traded company, the number one company in the entire industry in the world 
of what they did. And little old me wearing a backward normal hat and t-shirt and shorts every single day had to finally put on a pair of fucking big boy jeans so that I'd go to that meeting and make my hair. Um, but then it turned into a big ass contract, which literally changed the whole entire trajectory of, of what I'm capable of, because now I knew I could get more. And then I had so much cash flow that I didn't even need anymore. Like I can invest it and retire off that one account for the rest of my life if I invested it intelligently, which I did. So now that money makes money. Now I can do anything, anytime I really want within the lifestyle I want to live for myself. So I don't want a fucking Lambo. I don't want waterfront property in Miami in the penthouse suite for 30 millies. I don't give a shit about that. I'll go visit my friends with those things. Let them burn their money. That's what I call it, burning their money. Um, I'd rather just live my normal lifestyle with the same hoodie you're probably going to see for the next year so anyways um what's uh can anyone up for role play look at chris kennedy coming in hot i love it who needs to role play dude we got landon in the house we got james helms we got angel like like angel i think you guys would be a good pair to to role play and make it like a very consistent thing um in the sense, because you guys are both GSD inner circle, so is, so is Landon. Uh, but if Landon wants to join the party, feel free. But I think you guys should uh, should definitely role play is the most important skill in the fucking world. If you're not role playing, you're probably not going to be good at sales at all. Period. Like you probably will suck at sales, and you probably don't make the money you want if you're not role playing. I'll go out and on a limb and say that's the case, um, because it, that is the skill. That's the Tom Brady skill like tom brady's not sitting there not watching fucking film dude's watching film and he's the goat he's the best in the world and he's not so arrogant he doesn't practice so that's where i'm gonna get mad at people is like go fucking role player don't complain why you don't have what you want if you're in sales okay landon you you're like that's good sucking is just not the comparison it's just more you'll suck less every time you'll just get better every single time it's all uncomfortable because when i started my business i did not uh is somebody in the waiting room Waiting. I know. Um, when I first started, um, I'm uh, fuck. I was gonna say somebody's out there that would validate this, but I wouldn't even bring them in because I gotta go um, pretty soon. But I, I couldn't order McDonald's in the drive-through. I was so fucking shy. Like when I first, like I couldn't. Believe, I was so lucky that my one of my closest friends got into a sales gig, and then he brought me in because, and, and I was just like, dude, I, I don't, I don't like selling. I don't even know how. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't even know selling was a title. Um, when I started selling and uh, I got to do cold call that was selling, like talking to strangers in Alabama when my name's Rahul isn't so easy. Like it, it wasn't so easy back then. So anyways, that job changed everything because I was forced to get on a phone, make dials every day. And I was embarrassed. I'm like, hey, it's just Rahul because there's like four people around me. And then like they would make fun of me. They're like, dude, just have fun with this shit, man. Who gives a fuck if people hang up on you? It doesn't really matter. So that's the mentality we got. We created the alter ego of when you're on the phone, you're somebody else. When you're off the phone, you're just living your normal life like Kobe Bryant did. Kobe Bryant's Kobe Bryant in regular life. When you are got him on the field uh, or on the basketball court, he's the mamba. He wants to slit your throat. And I just learned something new about him. And I thought I knew everything because I watched one motivational video by Kobe every single morning. Um, I just learned that when he was playing, I don't know if this is every game, but this was an interview after he retired, um, that the music that he would play in his earphones over and over and over again was Michael Myers, that horror movie, because he wanted to kill people on the court. He wanted to slit their throats. And that's where he became, and I'm like, damn, I didn't know you were that fucking psychotic. That's amazing. I love that shit. I'm like, you get that mentally prepared that when, you, when that whistle blows, it's kill or be killed. And then that means just win. So that's a really cool mentality to have when you are, it doesn't, it's not a literal mentality for, for you guys. It's just psyching yourself out. So when you're going to do something, just do it really well, as well as you can. It doesn't mean I have to be a skill level 20 above me to get 20 above you. You have to start where you are and keep elevating up and find people to elevate you along the way. So that's the important part. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right, you guys have you you have a list of books or podcasts, quick, et cetera. Yeah, go ahead, Angel. I have a quick question. So you were selling banners, just banners. Is just that all you banner. Were That's it. One product, one service. And, one and why did you tr did you think about upselling with like another complimentary mm -hmm. um, product? Because there's so much shit that you can 
outsource and and like tie into what you're doing yeah and oh yeah i did oh yeah we, we we ended up doing banners and we just progressed in the graphic design field because i didn't want to have another skillful person on the team meaning skillful meaning a whole different talent like a web designer and coder i just said all right if i can take if i can go parallel meaning i can do the banners maybe i can do a logo maybe i can do a letterhead maybe i can do a magazine ad so we just came up with a package uh, which was a thousand fifty dollars you get three banners and a logo and everybody got the same logo. It was literally your two initials. Like, let's say, what's your last name? AM with a little fucking house on top. And it'll say Angel Mendoza Realty. That was it. Everybody got the same thing. It was either black and black and gold, blue and gold, or you told us blue and red. We didn't give a shit, but everyone got the same fucking logo. Um, and we'd sell that for $450 standalone. So it was a thousand fifty, three banners logo. And if you, once they said, oh, I love it, then we would upsell them into what we called, hey, you want the corporate ID? Like, what's that? Well, you get your letterhead, you get your envelope design, you get whatever else the fuck we put in that package design. It's only 1995. So it's barely more. You want it? Yeah, cool. So then we just, it was easy. What, what address? Do you have a domain name? Slap that shit on there. Boom. Template out. High profit margin. Same designer. You could, we should, I should probably wait to do stuff like that until I'm, I'm getting real good with one thing, right? Well, don't get good at one thing. Do the thing and you'll get good at it after people pay you. Okay. You don't even have to get good at it. You could get good at finding the good person at it and just give them directions. So when you close a deal, you can just basically have a form. If it's web design, you just get a web design intake form and say, hey, Mr. Customer, fill this out. If you need help, call me. I'll call you back in two days to check in to make sure I got it. Put it on them. If you're, if you're able to, if that's the process that you go with, that's what I would personally do. Um, and then from there, um, we'll get somebody on the back end saying, Hey, like, do you want work and just get somebody else to do it saying, here's how I want this, like, give me a time frame. How will this all get done? What happens if it doesn't like, what, what if we need things faster? Can you, can, can you accommodate? Cause I want to get more projects. I'm going to do my best. I don't have a lot now, but I'll do my best to, to partner with somebody, but I just want to make sure that we're on the same cultural vision of what I want to accomplish. I don't want to tout like I'm going to get you a million websites, but when I find my rhythm, it could turn into really regular business where I could be your only client. So I would get the vendor on board. Got it. Yeah, because you don't have to get good at anything other than selling if that's the model you want to go with, because I don't know how to design banner ads. I know how to grab a piece of paper like, oh, I'll actually show you. Look, look right here. These, this right here is my drawing. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a picture of this and send it to my designer. He's going to make it a dope ass hoodie. He's going to take my vision and it's going to say, it's almost going to be like that Mike Tyson boxing club, like layout design. So oh, I'm yeah, like reference it. and it's going to say, get shit. And then underneath done. And in the middle, it's going to say club. And like, so, so it's going to be like, so I just drew this literally in like, yeah. Uh, you can see how shitty this is. I'm gonna, snap a I'm gonna snap a picture. I'm gonna give them the exact reference of what I'm referencing. I'll say, put your unique twist on it and send that motherfucker back. He's gonna have that shit done. All three of those little layouts, because they're all very similar. He's gonna have that done in an hour. <laughs> Bless you. He's gonna have that shit done in one fucking hour from starting. So I don't know what his queue looks like, and I don't care. I'm not gonna say this is priority. This is one of the projects where I'm just going to say, just get it done. And I don't give a fuck when you get it done, as long as it's done within a week. Yeah, no, I got you. Got you. Yeah. Thank so you. then I just put timelines. So like on Trello, you can make a Trello card here. Let me just share one thing with you. I'm, I'm super late for this thing. So I'll beg for forgiveness for, so Justin and Skylar, I know I promised I'd call you guys today. I hope you're watching this. I'm late. Sorry. All right, let me give me give me one sec. I'm gonna give share a workspace. Now, this is something that I put together just for directions, um, for like a content factory. Um, oh, that's funny. They just text me. Um, okay, how do I share my screen here? Sorry, I got a new MacBook, so I'm still getting used to this crap. Okay, you like tr Trello? Trello's dope. Um, I I don't. I'm old school, man. I, I have a, I, I just use Excel spreadsheets with our Google sheets now. So I only adapted to Trello because obviously I'm not it, it, like, I don't, whatever the team wants, I want, because I'm not really wanting to be 
in project management. So I don't, whatever makes their lives easier is what it is, but it seems to work for them. So I don't care. I have the Trello mobile app. So, um, so it's easy for me to follow along, but this is just a template board right here. So this is what like you can do for each stage or just have like this. Let's see what this checklist looks like. So right here we have, this is our podcast or our content machine. If I do long form content like this, this probably wouldn't be podcast worthy because there is, uh, it's a little long, um, that, that longer than I'd want, but this could be a YouTube video. There could be chop ups of things I say in the middle. Um, I can make it like, I can make graphic design quote cards. I can write a whole blog about this story. I can have graphics where it's like, here's Rahul, a picture of me. I can have a little tip that I gave in here. So I can have those little quote cards and those scroll things that you see that are popular. I can make an animated GIF. I go boom, like a little dab that can turn into a GIF. Um, so this is how you can disseminate a lot of different, uh, uh, whatever, um, stuff like long form content. We got the thumbnails. We got the long form video. We got the podcast and anchor. We got the YouTube editing and posting. We got the blog. We have an email that goes out to the database that it exists. We have chocolates for social graphic design graphics with little tips or quote cards, everything posted on buffer, um, to be scheduled. And then I don't know what this is distributing. Okay. This could be like paid advertising. And here's like some of the people that have gone through this process. Like Jason Swank, he's a really cool coach. Michael Cooch, amazing guy. Jason Fladley, the number one dude in the world for like webinar training and sales. Lee Goff, some dude I met at a conference. So it's like there, and then there's tons of other people that we've done this for where I take my interview content. I can spread the fuck out of this. Um, and you can do the same thing with a web design thing. I have a checklist. I'll just give it to you. Um, come on the coaching call on Tuesday at 11 in the morning for the sales call. Remind me then, because I have it on my other computer. I have nothing on this new Mac. All right. Yeah, go to your meeting. Yeah, I got I to gotta jam right now. Um, uh, cause I'm, yeah, I'm running late cause I got a lot of shit to do today. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed this stuff. Watch that thing in the guides tab. I know we went super long. I could have condensed this down into like 20 or 30 minutes, but I thought it was important to kind of understand the journey. Shit didn't come easy. It took a lot of fucking work and a lot of freaking failure, but you just, I just had the mental capacity that, um, if, if, if anybody, if, if people can become professional athletes or like stupid people can become rich, I can certainly withstand a bunch of nose along the fucking way that's easy i love no now no thanks for the inspiration man yeah yeah thanks james i appreciate that all right well if you need more inspiration we're going to be doing a lot of shit in this group there's like we're going to be going live a lot more a lot of video content we literally shot like i mean the video editor said we got like 80 videos done in like 15 hours in one day um, so I don't know if that's true or not. Hopefully that list he tracks is correct. So we'll have a lot of valuable base content. We did some, some, some music videos too, that are kind of silly. So hopefully we're, we're, we're decent enough dancers and actors. So you can give us your feedback once those things are done. So anyways, check out that guides tab. It's the very first guide. It kind of covers in 10 minutes, like, a, a, a an accelerated version of what I just went over and how I think of like how to go get a hold of people. Cause my family taught this to me at a young age. They're like, if you want to get a hold of something, you get a hold of something, someone, something, no matter what, nothing's impossible. If you want to get a hold of the United States president, get a fucking hold of them if you want to. If you don't want to, you give up. So that's kind of the motto I operate under is break the door down if, or build one if it doesn't exist. So peace out, guys. I got our jam. Have a great rest of your weekend. See you guys next time. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys.